Hey everyone, it's Nick, and I'm here at 343 Labs. Uh, I produce music under the name Nick the Chen and Enix, and I'm gonna go over finger drumming on the push too. I'm gonna show you the techniques that I use and the layouts I use, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you a brief demonstration of the techniques I've been working on. Cool, so let's take a look at the pad layout. As you can see, my pads are very colorful and I like to color coordinate by the instrument type so that way when I have 64 pads like this, I can remember easily which ones I need to hit. First off, on the push, if you hit layout, that's actually how you expand from the 16 pads that you normally start with at the bottom to the full 64 pad mode. You might have to hit it twice and then you'll get all 64 pads that you can use. This is all running in one drum rack in Ableton on one track. I do have some side chaining going on between the uh, snare drum and the rest of like the melodic instruments, specifically these guitars. Uh, and let's just take a look at uh, how I normally start. So I would normally start by taking the kick, snare, and hat, which are the primary drum sounds, and laying them on this bottom row of pads. And normally I have the kick as red, the uh, snare, or in this case, snap. Uh, on blue and then my hi-hats on yellow. Now one thing I love about the push is that again it has 64 pads so I can actually duplicate some of my pads on different pads to create these finger rolls. They're all the same hi-hat and maybe on like a, a 16 pad uh, controller like the machine or uh, the MPC I might feel like duplicating hi-hats across pads is a waste but I think that's a really unique thing about the push. You can kind of experiment with your layouts. Same thing I have, I have a duplicated kicks here. Next thing after getting the kick, the hi-hat and the snare, uh, I got the guitar. And that's the initial creative inspiration spark that started this uh, finger drumming beat. So the guitar sounds like this. And one important thing is that the guitars don't overlap when I trigger the first chord and the second chord, in case I want to do it quickly in succession. In Ableton, this is known as choke groups, and you can access these choke groups in Ableton under the I.O., uh, the ins and outs. You'll see them in the, this chain list, so make sure that the chain list is on, and you can actually select, shift select multiple pads and put them in the same choke group at once. Now what this really means is when one pad plays and another pad enters in the same choke group, it will cut it off. So in this case, I actually did it from the push controller, uh, which is right here. And if you go into the slice or the pad menu, the choke group is actually right at the top and you can switch it with the first knob. So these are both in choke group one and they will cut each other off. Uh, so essentially at that point, I like using my uh, right hand for the drums and specifically my thumb on the kick and 
ring finger on the hi-hat, so I can kind of do this steady eighth note rhythm, and then put my middle finger on the snare or snap, so. So again, my uh, ring finger is kind of keeping the internal timing, the syncopated rhythm. That way, my freeze, frees up my left hand to do some of the more melodic stuff, and in this case, I'm doing it with these chords, so. The next part I added were the 808s, and these are colored here in purple. So the 808s follow the bottom note of the chord, and the top one is an octave higher. You can change the uh, pitch here in the same spot on the push as the choke groups, and that is the transposition value here. So you can see this is up one semitone and 13 semitones, which is one octave higher. Uh, this bottom 808 supports the second chord. And again, one octave higher right above it. So once you have that, that's like the biggest part of the beat. The rest of the pads are actually kind of laid out to support with either like effects fills or melodic fills and textures. So the next things I added were these nice melodies. And this really pushes the energy forward as I'm playing the chords and the drums. So I took my uh, left hand. And when there's space on the chord, I reach up and trigger. The top melody to give the energy uh, a forward motion. The other uh, pads here, and if you didn't know how to change the color, it is actually very simple. You can just hold shift, select the pad you want, and simply choose the color you want from the outside. So these green pads are all kind of textural percussion, some foley, uh, little snaps, a little block. And this is just nice to kind of reach down as I'm passing between the harmony and the melody to put in some percussion rhythms. The uh, top pink pads I like to do are kind of like melodic fills. This actually, I didn't use the rain stick, unfortunately. And uh, this, this kind of low textural vocal. So that's kind of the left hand side. Uh, it's pretty simple layout. I like to experiment a lot. The right hand tends to stay the same. Uh, but yeah, I really recommend first trying to load a drum rack with a bunch of different sounds and playing around with like different ideas uh, with your right hand and your left hand, try to, try to do them independently. Um, so to do this like a good exercise, I would like to do, and, and this is what we'll end the lesson with, is uh, counting on your right hand just to four. So if you count to four with your right hand and put your index finger maybe on a hi-hat pad and just go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and just keep that going. Then you're gonna just put the kick simply on the one. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. And then one, two, three, four, alternate the kick one to a, the snare. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So it's kick, snare, kick, two, three, four, snare, two, three. So once you have that going, again, you're just counting to four. This is your right hand. Put in your left hand and just try to do it on the one. And as long as you load in some kind of chord like I have here, just go find a sample of a chord, like a, a keyboard, a guitar. It's a really good way to work out that independence. So that'll look like this. Kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, and just count in your head. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Really, you just can count to four in a rhythmic sense. You can do all of this. It just takes patience and some time. So that's a good overview of this finger drumming layout. My name's Nick, we're here at 343 Labs. Please check out the other content on our YouTube channel and stay tuned for more videos.